Good evening. My name is Andrea Boykowicz, and I'm from Oakland Planning and Development Corporation. We're hosting a development activities meeting this evening uh, for 3208 Juliet Street, uh, which is uh, seeking a change uh, to of use in order to be able to uh, secure an occupancy permit for a two-unit building where currently it has no occupancy permit, uh, and it's in a single-family zone. Um, with us today are uh, Christian Umbach from City Planning. Uh, Yingyi Zhang, I'm sorry, are you also from City Planning? Yes, I am. I'm with the Zoning Division. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, and Jun Zhao, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, that's uh, very correct. Thank yes. you. Um, who is the owner of the property? Um, OPDC is the registered community organization for uh, the four neighborhoods of Oakland. <clears throat> and this project shared, it falls within uh, our service area. Uh, we are going to be recording this evening's meeting, and the recording will be placed on our uh, website for anybody to be able to peruse. I have to say in full disclosure that we had a little technical difficulty with the link that was publish publicized for this meeting uh, in advance, uh, and I had no means at the last moment that this was discovered to be able to publicize a new link. Uh, we therefore have created a fresh link that does work. Uh, we will, in fact, record the meeting, and should anybody uh, be curious about joining the meeting midway through, I will admit them with the new link. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jun Zhao. You are going to be presenting your uh, project here. And just so that you understand, the purpose of this meeting uh, is to allow the neighbors uh, and any other interested parties a chance to get to know what it is that you intend with the property and to ask you questions. But this isn't a deliberative body. This isn't the where any kind of decision is going to get made. Uh, this is just the means by which the public can get to know what it is that you have uh, planned for your property. So with that, please take it away. Thank you, uh, Andrea. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Jun Zhao. First of all, I apologize. I can, I for some reason, the difficult, technical difficulty, I cannot uh, turn my camera on. So my screen is dark. Um, so today we are present the application for certificate of occupancy as duplex for 3208 Juliet Street. Um, my name is Jun Zhao, and the property owner, and I have my husband with me. My husband is Xiangling Xu. Um, we are co-own um, this um, property. Um, a little bit of introduction for myself and uh, my family. We uh, come from um, in China, immigrant China on 1999. We stay in Pittsburgh for 25 years. Um, and uh, I raised my kids over here and they all graduate. And uh, I graduated from University of Pittsburgh as well with my MSEE, Master of Science in Electric Engineer. Um, my husband uh, is a chemist and uh, was a postdoctor in University of Pittsburgh. Um, Okay, after kids graduate, uh, we start looking for something uh, for fun or uh, something to do. We start looking at this property on um, 2021. There is uh, some background on this property. Um, this is a picture was showing, I mean, was taken by the seller's um, agent. It was published in Zero when we purchased the house. And this, this, this is the house, 3208 uh, Juliet Street. Um, this is in South Auckland. From the house, the window, um, you can overlook downtown of Pittsburgh in front of the house. And by the side, this is a, a river. Um, the, I think it's somewhere over here is 336. Um, to square here. Um, this is the um, um, map from the Google. We, this is a fresh map from the Google. This is the current uh, horse picture. Um, we there is a packing pad, and there is a grass. Then this is the house building. There is a patio over here. This is a stair, 
And this is a walkway from the back, the back street. This is a, the front street, this is a Juliet Street. And uh, there's also a walkway over here to the back. And uh, this is also a walkway from here. And uh, there are some garden over here. It's hard to see some rose garden, okay? So this is the drawing based on this picture and with dimension on. This is the main building. Uh, this is a stair. Uh, the stair is the door, is the entry to the second unit, if we so called. Um, this is the, what is the street called? Co co oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> we don't usually go this street, so we don't know the, the street name, but this is the, uh, the front, this part is the Julius Street. Um, this is a um, um, picture. This is a picture from a uh, county website. That's the building structure map, which reflects the uh, size of the building. It, it, the building is identified as a two and a half story building, which uh, if you can see from the uh, building itself, the first is called the ground, ground floor, then first floor, second floor. This is half floor. Um, so it's kind of two and a half um, floor building. Um, it's all four brick building. I mean, a little bit of frame, I think, at this at this part. Um, okay, so there is a timeline on this entire uh, event or the story. And the house was up on sale in uh, the up in the market for sale on April 16, 2021, with MLS 1494487 identified as two unit. Uh, I will show you the paper uh, a little bit later. And sales contract was signed on June 18, 2021. Uh, it was mortgaged, so um bank um has to appraise. So the house was appraised on July 19, 2021 as a two unit. House was closed on September 13, 2021. Um, we did some uh, wiring this year on September, early September, um, when the city inspector trying to uh, give us the uh, approval for the green light to, to power the house up and um, they find out the, uh, the city record, uh, there's no COO for two unit. That's where I am here. Um, I was not aware there is no COO on this building or on this house because um, the closing company never sent me this paper. On October 4th, which is two weeks ago, I called the closing company, asked the paper, and uh, they sent me this paper. I will show you a little bit later. Um, that's the timeline for this uh, application. Um, there, there are some list of the document uh, as the supporting material. Um, I will go through each of them. They are also, we went to college library, we found some historic uh, information as well. And uh, it's very interesting information. Um, we will go through the list. This is the, um, the MLS uh, list, which was identified as two unit. So it is said the property is zoomed as two family unit. Um, also over here is also uh, marked as multi unit. Okay, I have no doubt on that. And uh, Zero also um, posted as two un uh, multi unit uh, house, but this is more official. Uh, it's registered as uh, in MLS. Um, and uh, this is the paper I got two weeks ago, which I should ask. Uh, which the closing company should send to me before close. Uh, they never sent to me. 
uh, in this paper, the city identified the, the list of properties to units. Uh, however, there is um, no COO issued. So uh, it cannot be used as two family because there's no cer certificate of occupancy. But the building as a dueling, it identified as two unit. Then that's where I am to apply for occupancy certification. And um, okay, we keep on for the documentation. In the bank appraisal, it also identified as two unit, which is, this is the appraisal who for um, a part of the appraisal, this is the full page. It's hard to see, and this is a blow up. Um, it's identified as two unit. Um, they are all the same. Uh, they all the uh, reflect the actual uh, things. And uh, this is the uh, uh, county record. I went to the county office and they print out this for me. And this is based. Uh, this is the 2025 uh, tax information. Uh, it's identified as a two unit. Um, this is 2021, uh, oh, sorry, 20, 2001 county record also identified as two unit. Uh, 2001 is the earliest uh, record uh, in county. Um, so from the county record, it's always identified as two unit. Um, but uh, we went to college library we found some uh, interesting information on that. Um, on 1950 national census, there were three househead, total eight person uh, lived in this building. And um, this is uh, a screenshot we got. And um, you can see the first floor is vacant and the second, the third, fourth, they all have the name on that and the age on that and the relationship. And um, the um, 1900 uh, national census, there were 22 person lived in this house and the four house head were listed in this, uh, in this paper. Um, this is a blow up um, page and you it's hard to see it's handwriting, but uh, you can still see the um, the name. Yeah, and the horse head on that. Um, well, this is more clear. This is the 3208. So this is Juliet. So this two pages, uh, it's two consecutive pages. And uh, this is 3208 as well. Um, give you the each floors, per, uh, person's name and age, um, relationship. Uh, this uh, some uh, historic data on this house. Uh, yeah, this is also blow up information. And uh, there are some pictures of this house. The, this is the um, kitchen in the first unit, uh, kitchen on second unit. Um, front, front, back. So this is the door go to the second unit from the back door. This is the front door with the, um, the house number. And this is the um, back door from the uh, first uh, uh, kitchen. This is uh, from, this is the stair case from first unit to second unit. This is the uh, um, back door goes to the second unit. This is the uh, uh, kitchen. And uh, this is the uh, um, back door from the uh, ground floor, which has the uh, mechanical, it's a mechanical room with uh, um, furnace and uh, hot, uh, hot water boiler. Um, yeah, that's that's all on the uh, information for this house. Um, any any questions, any comments?
I think Andrew, are you on mute? Okay. Yeah. No, 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 I don't. I I don't specifically have any questions. I appreciate your uh, exposition and the historical research that you went through uh, in this. I did only a cursory uh, glance into the history myself and had found the Hopkins maps from 1903, uh, where indeed this was a brick structure. My surmise is actually that the first floor was um, commercial. Uh, it uh, has the frontage and the blank wall uh, most likely actually had a storefront window and would have been adjacent to the miniature um, uh, business district Han Fraser Street, uh, which was half a block, because basically that block up toward uh, had a number of storefronts on it uh, at one point. But the neighborhood is now solidly residential and there is no business located there anymore. Anyway, um, yeah. I am curious to know what changes to the configuration of the house are you planning to make uh, if you are allowed to proceed with the um, two units uh, in here? Are you going to change the way the two units are connected inside or out? Is there anything else that gets to be uh, modified? Um, I think for the current uh, um, uh, structure, uh, no, we do not have any plan to change the way it is, um, unless, I mean, uh, except to meet the code as necessary for PLI, mm -hmm. such as the electricity, yeah, things or fire rate, that's we have to um, meet. And can you tell me how many bedrooms are in each of the units that you plan to make? Um. So the current, uh, there are seven um, bedrooms. That's uh, oh, we did not, yeah, well, for both. I mean, uh, no, 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 for the entire building. Yeah. We we did not do any uh, reconstruction. It was as the owners, um, as he sold, as what, what he sold, as we did not have any intention to uh, change the structure uh, other than uh, resurface. I'm so sorry. I just want to make sure I understand. Are you saying that there is a total of seven bedrooms in the whole structure or that each of the two units that you are planning uh, to seek an occupancy permit for has seven bedrooms? Oh, no, 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 no. no total. Total. Okay. And are there two kitchens? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, hold on. Uh, two kitchens. Yeah. So this is the first unit of kitchen. This is the second unit of kitchen. Understood. Thank yeah. you. And how many bathrooms are there total? Uh, four. four. Each floor has one bathroom. I see. Yeah. Thank you. And so each of the two units occupies two floors? Correct. Correct. And there is a point of entry from inside that services both units, that, that closed stairwell that you were showing a photograph of with the door at the top. The, yes. the top is the entrance to the... Try to find the future. Uh, this yeah, one. This will be the right. emergency exit. This is emergency. No, yeah. For the, for so the second unit. This is, the, um, this is staircase from first unit to second unit. But they have uh, different entries to outside entry. Um, so this is the entry to second unit from the back. Okay. And then can you tell me anything about how close uh, or in what configuration that interior stair is to the exterior door? Like is are the two are the two exits for the second floor, second unit far apart or are they very close together? Um okay, so uh, this is the um, uh, entry to the uh, to the second unit. This is Understood. the kitchen. Okay, then the hold on. Uh, where is the picture? This Here. one. Yeah. So from the kitchen, you mean from the kitchen? Kitchen is the in. It's it's inside the right. The back in the uh, back of the door. So from a kitchen to here, maybe, let me see. At least 15 feet. Yeah, 15 feet-ish. The kitchen itself, maybe 12, 15 feet. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I also have a question about the parking pad in the back. Uh, does your plan that that's going to be uh, of use for the tenants of the building? You mean the parking? Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yes, yes. Uh, where is the parking? This one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it seems like you have space for a very large number of cars, more, more than you would have, you know, occupying the... Um, the building, right? Like it looks to me from that that you could fit six or seven cars. Um, yeah, no, technically only fit uh, three. Four is hard because if you put four, this car cannot get out. This is, um, I think it's a little bit uh, um the red line. So this parking is actually is it's uh, over here. You can see this mm -hmm. is the grass. Yeah. So this part is very little. Only can hold a. Uh, two car in parallel. So if this car can want to get out, and um, then if there's four car, okay, in this way, this car is hard to get out. I understand. I was just curious to know right. if you had a plan for okay. how many I, cars you would permit to be actually, on. Actually, Andrea, would I be able to chime in a little of bit? Course. So like, uh, um, I think the applicant, June, if I can call you by your first name. Yeah, like sure. she's yeah, she is uh, only applying for the C um certificate of occupancy for this four story structure. So with no off street parking. So whatever their parking showing on the street, they have to apply for a separate permit through zoning application to allow off street parking. And then the maximum number, if I correct if I remember correctly, it will be um I Thing it might be for maximum that can um allow on site off street parking, mm -hmm. and then that will be still a separate permit. And oh, then for this that purpose, okay. Yeah. So for that's this good to know. purpose, that's good to know. yes, that's good to know because in what well, instead of like getting citation to understand that it, it might oh. be better to I mention it right now. Okay. So um, yeah, but for this application, they're mm -hmm. only applying for um certificate of occupancy for this structure for now. And then if future parking, so like mm -hmm. even though they're showing parking on here, yeah. um, I would not say it was allowed it, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure I can't please don't call me on that. But just yeah. so that you know if they have to um they are they have to file a different um, application for the off-street parking. Oh, really? So, OK. Yeah, I, I would assume so. Just the street, do we need to ask, ask for permit? Um, I think for this issue, like, uh, yeah, because like for this scope that we are having right now is off-street. Like, uh, you are applying for the use of four-story structures as a two-unit residential with no off-street parking. That's okay. what's showing our scope right now. Okay. But mm -hmm. so 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 we we, we once we um get to the occupancy just for the residential, right? Occupancy, then yeah. we can yeah, apply. That's that two different uh, story, right? Two different uh, uh, applications. Then we can apply for um, the so sure. for that yeah. part that you could also um I need to double check with my caller if you can file, like if you can add to apply for park off street parking through this okay. permit or not. But I okay. can get back to you through email. Oh yeah, sure. But, uh, yes. So what you are doing right now, what we are granting you, yeah, does not include the off street parking. Oh, okay, I see. So so yeah, let me know if I can add this to this application or. Um, if I need to file a different application, yeah, 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 definitely I need to do so. I mean, I, I, I was not aware of this at all. Thank you for. Yeah, no, no problem. So I think Andrea's like, she's asking because like uh, parking is always tight is a big concern for the residents like adjacent to your property. So it'd be nice if you can answer them what you're trying, like what, what's your plan for the parking, off street parking? So, um, Exactly, and I I'm sort of further I have an interest in understanding whether your intent would be for this off-street parking area to be yeah. for the exclusive use of the residents of the building. 
Yes. Or yes. if, for instance, you have tenants who don't have cars, yeah. whether you would want to find an, a tenant for a parking space, because that's a whole other thing. Right. No, no. Only for if if the tenant does not have enough, does not have four cars, three cars, just live as empty, right? And uh, there's no intention for anybody else to park in this park lot, parking lot. Okay. Thanks for bringing this up. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I do not uh, know there is a, <laughs> yeah. It is, it is a, uh, an unfortunately very difficult uh, practice to enforce and manage. People tend to park cars on anything that's flat in Oakland and it has led to a lot of very negative uh, outcomes for the, for the neighbors and for the neighborhood. Um, and so we're we're just um, we're keen to know and understand what your intentions are uh, for this space. So yeah, thank sure. you very much for sharing that with us, and thank you Yingyi for um, busting in there. That was extremely helpful. Um, no problem. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Well, that's pretty much all of the questions that I have. Does either of you have any questions? No questions for me. This was helpful to understand more of the context. So thank you for the presentation. Yeah, no yeah. question. Just so um information for you, Andrea. Um, the zoning board of adjustment hearing for this application is scheduled to be on November fourteen. So if you have any or any neighbors, like uh, any residents in the neighborhood, have any concern, they are um oh well, ZBA is open to all the public. Mm -hmm. And it's scheduled for November 14. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We will put the meeting details on our website uh, together with a link where anybody who uh, would like to can sign up to, um, to attend and testify. Um, but we are grateful. Um, uh, thank you very much to both of you for uh, presenting this project. And um, if there are no additional questions, then I think we are done for the evening. Yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for listening for us. And uh, that's really, really a uh, relief and appreciate. I'm a little bit uh, stressful on this whole thing and appreciate everyone is so helpful. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Have a good night.